In you, O Lord, I put my trust. Let me never be put to shame. Release me from the snare they have hidden for me, for you indeed are my refuge. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Welcome to our celebration of Mass for this Friday of the second week of our Lenten journey. The Fridays of Lent tend to point us towards Good Friday and the moment of our Saviour's death on the cross. And today's scripture readings are a perfect example. We hear about betrayal prompted by jealousy, both in a story from the Old Testament and a figure who prefigures Christ in his death, and also a parable that Jesus tells, which in itself looks forward to the sacrifice that he will make. As our minds and hearts are turned more towards Holy Week and that moment of the Saviour's death, let's begin our Mass by asking for the forgiveness that he has won for us as we confess our sins in our hearts. Lord Jesus, you call your people to turn away from sin. Lord, have mercy. You teach us wisdom and write your truth in our inmost hearts. Christ, have mercy. You forgive sins through the ministry of reconciliation. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that purifying us by the sacred practice of penance, you may lead us in sincerity of heart to attain the things to come. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. Israel loved Joseph more than all his other sons, for he was the son of his old age, and he had a coat with long sleeves made for him. But his brothers, seeing how his father loved him more than all his other sons, came to hate him so much that they could not say a civil word to him. His brothers went to pasture their father's flock at Shechem. Then Israel said to Joseph, are not your brothers with the flock at Shechem? Come, I'm going to send you to them. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them at Dothan. They saw him in the distance, and before he reached them, they made a plot among themselves to put him to death. Here comes the man of dreams, they said to one another. Come on, let us kill him and throw him into some well. We can say that a wild beast devoured him. Then we shall see what becomes of his dreams. But Reuben heard, and he saved him from their violence. We must not take his life, he said. Shed no blood, said Reuben to them. Throw him into this well in the wilderness, but do not lay violent hands on him, intending to save him from them and restoring to his father. So when Joseph reached his brothers, they pulled off his coat, the coat with long sleeves that he was wearing, and catching hold of him, they threw him into the well, an empty well with no water in it, then they sat down to eat. Looking up, they saw a group of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead, their camels laden with gum, tragacanth, balsam, and resin, which they were taking down into Egypt. Then Judah said to his brothers, what do we gain by killing our brother and covering up his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, but let us not do any harm to him. After all, he is our own brother and our own flesh. His brothers agreed. Now some Midianite merchants were passing, and they drew Joseph up out of the well. They sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for 20 silver pieces, and these men 
took Joseph to Egypt. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Remember the wonders the Lord has done. God called down a famine on the land. He broke the staff that supported them. He had sent a man before them, Joseph, sold as a slave. Remember the wonders the Lord has done. His feet were put in chains, his neck was bound with iron, until what he said came to pass, and the Lord's word proved him true. Remember the wonders the Lord has done. Then the king sent and released him. The ruler of the people set him free, making him master of his house and ruler of all he possessed. Remember the wonders the Lord has done. Praise to you, Lord, glory to you, Christ. You are the word of God. God loved the world so much that he gave his only son. Everyone who believes in him has eternal life. Praise to you, Lord, glory to you, Christ. You are the word of God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, listen to another parable. There was a man, a landowner, who planted a vineyard. He fenced it round, dug a wine press in it and built a tower. Then he leased it to tenants and went abroad. When vintage time drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his servants, thrashed one, killed another, and stoned a third. Next he sent some more servants, this time a larger number, and they dealt with them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them. They will respect my son, he said. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to each other, this is the heir. Come on, let us kill him and take over his inheritance. So they seized him and threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. Now, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They answered, he will bring those wretches to a wretched end and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will deliver the produce to him when the season arrives. Jesus said to them, have you never read in the scriptures, it was the stone rejected by the builders that became the keystone. This was the Lord's doing, and it is wonderful to see. I tell you then that the kingdom of God will be taken from you and given to a people who will produce its fruit. When they heard his parables, the chief priests and the scribes realized that he was talking about them. But though they would have liked to arrest him, they were afraid of the crowds who looked on him as a prophet. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Two fairly long scripture passages, so I'll try and be brief. I think the connection between the two is obvious. The brothers who plot to kill Joseph, the parallel is those who plot to kill Jesus. And the reason's the same, it's jealousy. Joseph has annoyed his brothers by being his father's favorite and also by his prophetic dreams, where he actually says that his brothers will bow down before him. And that fairly predictably has got up their noses somewhat. Jesus too has annoyed the chief priests and the Pharisees to the point where they are plotting to get rid of him. The parable he tells about the wicked tenants is directed straight at them. They are the tenants who have abused God's prophets, who have ignored the servants that God has sent and who will kill the son and heir, all out of their jealousy. As I say, the parallels are very obvious, a couple that you might not have noticed. Did you hear how in the story of Joseph at the very end, when his brothers sell him, they sell him for 20 silver pieces. When you heard that, did you think, oh, hang on a minute, Judas, 30 silver pieces. Joseph and Jesus are both sold as part of this act of betrayal born from jealousy. 
But there's another, I think, more important link between these two stories. The psalm in between them gave it away because that tells us what happened after Joseph was so sold into slavery. Eventually, he was recognised by Pharaoh. He became the master of Pharaoh's house, a huge influential figure in Egypt. And when the famine had struck the people in Israel, they were saved because Joseph was in that position of power. So in a sense, there was a bigger plan going on. And that moment when the brothers are plotting to get rid of Joseph, in a sense, even that is a part of this great unfolding plan of God to save his people. So too the death of Jesus, his betrayal, those who seek to silence him, in a sense, they too are part of God's bigger plan. But that plan is not just to save one small group of people from famine. That plan is to save all human beings from eternal death, to bring salvation to the whole world. So these stories are teaching us something about Jesus, about his trust in his Father, but also about his willingness to go through this for that much bigger purpose, the gift of salvation for all people. That's what we rejoice in. And that's why we must seek to be good tenants of the vineyard that is entrusted to us. Whenever I hear that parable, I always find that line towards the end, one that makes me think, I tell you that the kingdom of God will be taken from you and given to a people who will produce its fruit. Now, that means us. We are the people who are meant to be producing the fruit of the kingdom of God. As our Lenten journey continues, perhaps a good thought for us, a good examination of conscience for this day, is to ask ourselves, what fruit have I produced for the kingdom of God, for the Lord, today? So let us think of the prayers and intentions that we bring to our Mass today. First today, I'm asking for prayers for a very specific intention. Today, Pope Francis is beginning his pastoral visit to Iraq. For the next four days, he is visiting holy places in Iraq. He is meeting with Christian leaders, members of the Christian congregations there, and also leaders of other religions. Now, this is a visit which obviously is fraught with dangers. Iraq is still an unsafe place, and also the pandemic is still causing major problems there. But Pope Francis is insisting on this trip, going, as he says himself, as an apostle of peace. He wants to support the Christian community in Iraq, which has been absolutely decimated by the wars and the difficulties of recent years. But he also wants to build new relations between different religions, between different communities. There's a very positive spirit in Iraq to welcome the Holy Father at the moment, but prayers have been asked for the whole world, for his safety on this trip, but also that it may achieve in what he's trying to do, that it may bring hope, that it may bring peace, that it may bring new life, not just to the Christians of Iraq, though goodness knows they need it, but to all the peoples of that country. So today, and for the next three days, please do remember the Holy Father, the Christians of Iraq, and all the peoples of that country in your prayers, that the Lord's will may be done, and that peace and hope may be given to all their people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let's pray to you today for our own parish communities, for ourselves and all members of the church, that we, on our Lenten journey, may seek more and more to be close to Jesus, so that day by day we may produce the fruit of the kingdom of God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And for a moment in silence, let's think of our own prayers and intentions for Mass today. We ask for the prayers of Mary, Mother of God, saying, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Most loving Father, who loved us so much that you sent your Son into our world 
to be the gift of salvation for all peoples. Help us to be faithful tenants of the vineyard entrusted to us, so that we may return to you the produce in due season. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May your merciful grace prepare your servants, O God, for the worthy celebration of these mysteries and lead them to it by a devout way of life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For through bodily fasting, you restrain our faults, raise up our minds, and bestow both virtue and its rewards through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exultation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, 
the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. Now at the Saviour's command, and formed by his divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. God loved us and sent his Son as expiation 
for our sins. Let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal salvation, we pray, O Lord, that we may set our course so well as to attain the redemption you promise. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads for the blessing. Grant your people, O Lord, we pray, health of mind and body, that by constancy in good deeds they may always merit the defence of your protection. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Ave Regina Celorum, Ave Domina Angelorum, Salve Radix, Salve Porta, Ex qua mundo lux est orta, Gaude Virgo Gloriosa, Super omnes speciosa, vale o valde decora, et pro nobis Christum exorvat.